Greetings, I am Takur. Hello, everyone. I know that you all are looking forward to hearing about the uh, government meetings. And first, before I even start, I would like to thank you all for participating, all those of you who have, in the meetings. It was wonderful to see so many of you there. And many of you did some talking, not all of you, but uh, there were uh, those of you that uh, actually wanted to say a few things, and that was very acceptable and actually very beautiful as well. Now, some of you only said a couple paragraphs, and other ones of you went on for 45 minutes. So uh, it was acceptable for all different kinds of speech to be heard. So thank you very much. First of all, the topics that were covered, as I had mentioned before, were first contact, uh, disclosure, hybridization, the hybrid, hybrid children, uh, also site to site, medical site to site, medical uh, of all kinds, actually. We talked about uh, the information that we had given them about medications and medicines uh, a while back as well, which has not been given to the people yet. Um, <clears throat> we talked about the state of the planet in the sense that there are many things going on and uh, it would look like there is some dangerous situations occurring. We also wanted to talk about um, the state of the solar system because in the solar system there's many different species and they're wanting to talk to humans, they're wanting to observe humans. And right now with what is happening with your planet, um, everyone has been uh, given the no go for talking to humans, for being close to humans, and the Galactic Council has said they want uh, most of the activities to stop. So they have brought <clears throat> even those aliens that were there in the fourth dimension, some of them have been taken off the planet because of the timeline situation, which you are also aware of. I will talk about that as well. In fact, I might as well talk about that first because that is very, very important. Many of you have been sending energy to the timeline to Mother Gaia and to the atmosphere for, for a while now, and there is only now eight days left. Next Sunday will be a day that we must uh, look at very carefully because <clears throat> if the timeline is not cleared up by then, it will be obvious that something else will be happening. Another, another event of some sort will happen. We're not sure exactly what that would be, but we know that it would not be a pleasant one. Right now, you're at about 47% of where you need to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. It seems that you have some congestion. But you are about 47% of where you need to be. And you would not even be that far except for all the people that have been involved with this and sending energy and things of this nature. It was also discussed in the, the meetings for at least eight hours, this particular situation. You have many scientists there. You have many people working on the situation, hands-on down there. They did a great amount of cleanup. They did a great amount of uh, work already. But some of the answers to the questions were not viable. <clears throat> they do hope and pray that it will continue to get better, but it has to be at at least 95% by next 
Sunday. And we are hoping that it will be. They are making great strides. Um, I did not expect them to be at 47% at this point, but they have done a great job with cleanup, and that is was part of it. So um, I cannot really go into detail as what's going on down there exactly, because it is top secret government official stuff. And they would not appreciate that being told over the over the uh, broadcast. So I will just tell you this. It is, there are many different things that are being enacted in this time. And so I will let you know that I am very uh, and, mm, optimistic. Is there any questions about that without asking exactly what's going on? But if there is some uh, questions about this situation or things that you need to know to uh, be more involved in it, please let me know. Of course, Astrid, hi. I have a question about this. <laughs> what I would like to know is if um, understanding that a significant amount of progress has already been made um, towards the solution, um, Obviously, um, our healing uh, energy will be a contributing factor. Yes. Uh, but is the majority of the progress coming from um, scientific solutions at this time? Yes. Actually, um, <clears throat> about 30% is from the healers. Wow, that's great. 30% of the progress. But uh, the other 70% of the progress has been scientific and has been uh, clean up and things of that nature. Uh, I should say scientific and clean up. Very good. So then that really is an encouragement to everyone listening uh, to continue to send their healing energy and prayers uh, toward yes. that situation. That was an approximation on the percentages, but it's, it's very close. Thank you. I did not have time to get the precise calculations on everything because there is so much information uh, going on right now, uh, but that is a very close approximation. Thanks. Hi, Cooper. This awesome. is Wendy. Yes, Wendy. Hi. Hi, hi. I thank you. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing all this with us. Um, I just wanted to to elaborate on that just a moment then many of us um have been receiving like this really i don't know powerful like um i would call it shamanic energy you know the connection between the spirit and the earth and yes. it seems like it's been very strong um especially in the last few days and now with your with your comment about the healers having a an important role you know in the in the progress of the situation or the healing of it, however you want to put it. Um, yes. Is that something then, I mean, I, I'm actually kind of a surprise, not surprised, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that that has had so much impact. So many of us have been feeling this urge to like have more of these gatherings. Is so, are you saying that that would be something that would be even more beneficial? Yes, let me tell you about what the healing energy has actually done. But, uh, and let me add this to it as well. There are many, many healers on the earth sending their energy to Mother Gaia, to the atmosphere and the timeline. There are those outside of the atmosphere that are actually human, that are sending it to the upper portions of the atmosphere as well. You have non-human, or I mean, you have humans that are uh, working with non-humans to actually uh, clear the air as well. They are allowed to work outside the atmosphere because they are humans. And there are some galactic uh, aliens allowed to work to help them clear the air also if they are not directly interacting with humanity in any way or affecting 
a humanity in any way. So it, it has rules and regulations and guidelines, but there are those that are outside your atmosphere that are also working to help this situation. Uh, but yes. So, does that include does that include the Yael? Um, and I missed the first part, so forgive me if you've already addressed that. Does that include the Yael? I've been feeling their energy really strong the last few days. The, the Yael have been sending prayer energy, and and uh, any any species is allowed to send healing energy. Any species is allowed to do that. They're allowed to send their own healing energies to the earth atmosphere, the earth itself, the people of the earth. There is nothing prohibiting anyone to send that kind of energy to the earth. So that is very helpful. So yes, your feeling of the X3 energy from the Yu Yil is very, very strong. Okay, good. And it's, I mean, it's good to know that obviously we're having a lot of assistance with all this, even though we can't all be clear on what's exactly going on. And I understand from a higher perspective why that has to be. I mean, I, I get that. Um, well, there's, you could give a simple explanation, but it would cause more problems than it would cause solutions. Exactly. So a simple explanation is not really there that you would have to go into detail and, and a simple explanation would cause you to ask 40 more questions about it. So it is best and it plus it, it is not supposed to be discussed. <laughs> the actually a, event is a top secret, but the very fact that we are discussing it here, they, they're allowing this much information to come out through us because we talked to them at the government meetings about this and told them that we were going to give an update on this and they told us what we were allowed to say okay i i understand yeah well and i'm sure i'm fairly sure that many of us were at the government meetings as well um and you if know. you were and you brought it back to your subconscious you will know exactly what's happening. Yeah, that's how I, that's exactly how I feel. Um, and so and many of you that were there actually heard exactly what the problem is and what happened and what is going on now. There's many, I mean, it's more than one thing. There was an event and then there was an event after the event and then there was uh, all kinds of the, you know, the Syrians are there to help with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with certain things, and um, and they I are kind of getting the feeling too that many of us uh, agreed to not to almost forget so that we don't accidentally say anything. Cool. Well, and the other thing is, it it really won't wouldn't help if you did or didn't mm -hmm. say anything because the only thing you can do is send energy, pray, and and do the things that you are doing now, there is no way that you could possibly change the situation in any way outside of what you're doing. So the very information is not really needed. What's really needed is your efforts. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll continue to do, do that. that. We have to, um, I also want to be mindful here uh, of the overall time that we have today to occur. So uh, maybe you want to cover the uh, government meeting update next? Correct. Thank you. Uh, let us, I'll let that go and just say, please continue to pray and send healing to that situation. And I believe that there will be an optimistic outcome. All right to the meetings. Thank you again for many of you coming. And I want to say that um, I, the last time that we had the meetings, not everybody got to speak because they, there were certain countries that stopped people from speaking because they, they thought they had heard enough on that particular subject. I, uh, I'll give you an example. There was eight people that wanted to speak about or even nine people that wanted to speak about first contact, but only five of them got to speak because they said, all right, we've heard five people speak about that. That's enough information that we don't want to hear anybody else. 
but this time we made it so that everyone could speak no matter how many people were going to speak on that subject. Uh, it was a prerequisite for the humans to come is that they must be heard. And so it was agreed that everyone would be heard. And so 28 people spoke. That is amazing to me. It was That's exciting. only about uh, 16 people got to speak last time. Or maybe 15, I'm sorry. 15 people got to speak last time and 28 spoke this time. So that's a great deal more people. And a great deal more time was spent on listening to what humans had to say about their own world and about uh, what they felt about aliens coming into their world. So that was a beautiful thing. Uh, we got very much closer to uh, first contact. That was the biggest biggest uh, foot forward that we had uh, had this meeting. Uh, at the last meeting, 15 countries out of 200 and, what is it, 30 countries on your planet were in favor. Only 15 countries were in favor of first contact last meeting. This meeting, we were up to 33. Now, that oh, is more than, no more, than double. more than double, but of course, remember, keep in mind that the, some of the very larger countries are the ones that are against first contact because they have the most to lose. At least they feel that they have the most to lose because they have the most power, they have the most uh, influence, etc. And with it's always discussed that when, if, ali if aliens were to come to Earth, they are saying that they would get all the attention and take the attention away from uh, the political officers, the, all, they don't say that outright. They allude to the fact that they would be pushed into the background and that there would be chaos because governments would not be working properly and and uh, many, many different excuses about why aliens would be really interfering with the way that the earth would be run. Now, we made it very clear, very, very clear, that we'd have no interest in the government whatsoever. Our only interests for the planet are is to you become neighbors in the galaxy for us to have exchange programs of thought processes, for us to be friends, basically. Um, and they cannot believe, oh, and to have trade and different kinds of agreements of this nature. All, all of that's been discussed many, many times. And there is some trade agreements between us right now. And, uh, but they do not trust that we do not have another agenda. Now, the other agenda, we, many people say you do have another agenda. Okay, we're going to expose that. The other agenda is that whenever we do, whenever we have people come and give us hybridization or DNA or want to have children, we benefit from that. Yes, we do but you also benefit from that in the long run. So we do not feel that that really is a hidden agenda, but they feel that we are making a profit of some sort in um, taking the DNA and making it into serum for the galaxy and, and having hybridization for children and things of this nature. They feel like we're making a profit from that kind of um, those kinds of things. And to be honest, we do make some uh, trade agreements with serum and things of that nature. But in the long run, you will also be with, involved in that program when your governments want to be. Does that make sense to you? So they will, yes, also, perfect sense. They will also benefit from that. So we do not have a hidden agenda. We thought that that was pretty obvious 
that if we would take DNA or ask for DNA and you would volunteer it, that we that some good would ha be brought from it. And some good is being brought from it. So that's a wonderful thing. But we're not making a fortune or doing tons and tons of trades because of that. But it is something that we do do. It's just part of uh, the exchange for serum for some species. We will make, a, a, we will have a trade agreement or whatever. So it is not that we are really benefiting that much. But you will benefit in the long run after uh, we become closer as uh, part of the galaxy. All right. Now, there's many, many subjects that are discussed in the meetings. I would like you to ask questions because I would, would like to address the things that are important to you. Well, the first thing that came to my mind to occur was healing. There was a lot of people who have requested from us to be able to have the opportunity to come and go as they please in order to, um, you know, request and receive healing from the ships in the colony. Yes, we have discussed site-to-site -site healing processes. This seems to get, be getting closer all the time, every meeting we have as well. Of course, they've already agreed that the politicians' families would agree to do this. However, we will not let this happen until they allow all people of Earth to be involved in the program and then let us select who is the most needy. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, it does. Now, just to clarify that then, those of us, like the Human Colony and Burke McNair, are... I mean, we're already, are we already, um, you know, allowed to do that? You are not allowed to come site to site. We are, okay, we do, but, okay. they do allow us to send you infusions and do some things for you that can be done from a distance. Site to site would be a much greater benefit to humanity. We would be able to clear, uh, heal things as cancer, uh, blindness, uh, deafness, all kinds of things that your people cannot do uh, without a great deal of trouble right now. But it's a much easier process for us. If you could come site to site and we could be actually in the same room with you and use our equipment on you. But now, at this point, it is only in the astral that we are allowed to send infusions that we were uh, there are some techniques that we can do from a distance we can do so, a little bit of movement of bone work we, but it's it's very very tedious work from a distance you understand it takes a long much longer time to do some of this work from a distance than it would be in person and plus it's, it has to be so precise. We must be very, very careful when we're working on humans to um, make sure that no mistakes or errors are made. What other yes, questions? I understand. Yeah. Oh, what? No, I just said, yes, I, I understand that. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. What other questions are there? Does anyone else have a does yeah, anybody else have a question or Yes. How are you, Tikur? Can you hear me? Sheer, yes. Greetings. Greetings. Um I don't know if you remember, but I actually suggested some kind of a technique to use uh, in those meetings involving angels and telling politicians about their karma. Yes. Um, do you think something like that could happen? It does, but not on the uh, not on the level that we want it to. Angels are there, but they cannot be seen by the governments. And the reason why angels cannot be seen is because it would affect belief systems, and they must choose their own belief system. And if angels would appear, it would be illogical that it would affect their belief system and change their minds about things. But angels are present in spirit 
and they can feel them, and they can uh, understand that they are there. We actually let them know that they are there. Some believe and some do not. But they cannot, they're not permitted to be seen. I see. And did you spoke about uh, what happened in Antarctica? Tell them yes. that we, we had eight hour discussion about Antarctica. Yes. And uh, I think the governments are accountable for what happened. It was actually their fault that they allowed something like that to happen. Is it possible it, to force mm -hmm. some kind of an article saying that humans are dangerous to, to themselves and, uh, and uh, third parties should, should come and oversee humanity or something like that? Um, let me explain something to you. Uh, there are other civilizations that are a danger to themselves as well. You are not the only civilization that is a danger to yourself. But the prime directive says that if you get yourself in trouble, you must get yourself out of trouble as well. Meaning that it is not fair for other civilizations to come and save your life if their lives weren't saved when they were in trouble. So they are giving you the same opportunity to survive as everyone else in the whole universe. So meaning this, there are some civilizations that have destroyed themselves or a lot of themselves, not completely maybe, but have wiped themselves, uh, some of them have wiped themselves totally out, but most have just, uh, damage themselves very strongly. If in this situation, your people must fix the problem because it was your people that made the problem. It's not fair for all those of us who have greater technology to come and help you when you put yourself in peril. It's like, uh, it's, it would not be fair to those that were never helped out of their own dilemmas and made it through and became higher ed higher civilizations and reached their ascension points. So we must give you the same fairness that was given everyone else. I see. Uh, last question. After what happened in Antarctica, is, did the cabal is being now destroyed, basically, now there's a free hand to go and destroy the cabal in whatever measure it means? I cannot say that the cabal is destroyed, but uh, there were those called in to uh, speak to those in charge, those that were in charge of what happened, those that were responsible, those that had some blame in this and there was others other than the cabal involved in this and others other than the cabal that have blame in this. So all those that have blame and um, had responsibility in this are being charged and questioned and they will be dealt with. And that is because the Galactic Council, you even though you are not part of the galactic neighborhood, your planet is, is still has some degree of responsibility in how you are perceived by the universe, the galaxy, the solar system. And if you put more than just your planet in jeopardy, then you will be uh, given, you will have to pay some uh, criminal charges, if you know what I'm speaking of, they have put yeah. more than just your planet in jeopardy. That's what I'm saying. So if we put other in jeopardy, that gives a third party an opportunity to come here and oversee us. This well, is the see, logical and responsible thing. What will happen in this case and what has happened is those other places that were in jeopardy or that your people have put in jeopardy have been saved because it wasn't their uh, responsibility. It wasn't their fault what had happened. And so they weren't uh, responsible or to blame for the problem. So they have been helped. 
Your people, mm -hmm. on the other hand, must help yourself. I see. Okay, thank you very much for answering my questions. I will let others speak. Very well. Thank you, Shir. To Kerr? Yes. So basically, I mean, the men in, men in black, right? I mean, most of the, the good ones are supposed to be um, uh, saving us, supposedly, from the scum of the universe. So what about the scum of the earth? Who are saving us from all the, the humans, the human scum? Who's saving you from them? Yeah, you know, I mean, who what well, gives them the right? Let me tell you this. There are many very good people on your planet and many that are in office. There are some very wonderful politicians, believe it or not. They may not always tell the truth, but if they do tell a lie, it's for a positive reason, meaning that they're saving other people or they're doing something that will eventually become positive, even though that may seem like a negative, uh, a negative uh, answer. They are, they're keeping it from people from harm. But the, those which you call the scum of the earth have always been there. They just didn't have the power that they have today. But they, the, the energies that be may fall into the wrong hands. And there are the, those that are very wealthy on your planet. And some of those have been corrupted by such things, thinking that they can do whatever they want and it won't have any consequences. But they are now learning differently. Now, who's saving? It's not fair for um, some of these bad people to put everyone in jeopardy. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that is true. And I am sad to say, but the rules uh, throughout the galaxy and the universe have always been the same. If, you, if your people are responsible for something, then you must, you must get yourself out of it. And I, Eliani, I believe that they will, because this timeline must continue. And there are so many people praying for it so much energy being sent to it that I believe you will be saved. And there are many out there that if, if you weren't during an ascension time or and if this planet wasn't so per, uh, important, they just wouldn't be there. But you have so many out there that are allies with you. It is a very big plus that you are who you are in the universe as far as a planet. And so you have about many, I couldn't even tell you what percentage more support than most planets would have during a time like this, but your support is much greater. Uh, to cure a quick question, for the time, uh, timeline to be healed, how much time, um, what is the frame time? Next Sunday, you must be at least 95% healed. And what prediction do you have for it? I predict that you will be there because you're at 47% now. And they have moved up in, uh, there. Um, mm, how, how do I say this without being incorrect? I mean, without uh, saying too much. I would say this. At the... At the percentage they were three days ago, it did not look possible for them to get to the percentage they are today. So they have made that much progress in their thought processes. Their, their planning has changed quite substantially. They did have two other plans in place to take care of this problem, but have deemed them um, unlikely. And so they have changed to a much more likely uh, successful end. I have a quick question to Kerr. This is yes. Um, was I at the meetings and did I speak? Thanks. What, I, I did not, at what part of the meeting? Yeah, what, did I attend the meetings and did I Yes, speak? you did attend the meetings. I and you did speak, yes. I did, because I wasn't yes. supposed to. 
okay, this is very interesting. But you didn't speak a lot. You said you had heard several people speak, and you just said, I, I need to say something here. And so you, you made some comments. You didn't have a speech prepared. Okay, good, because I was kind of told that I needed to be quiet for this one. So I just well, to... they allow, if you have comments or questions or anything of that nature, of course they're going to let you speak. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. You are welcome. Is there anything on uh, and disclosure? Hold on, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Lainey. Lainey, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just wondering um, what was um, anything else on disclosure? Sorry. Disclosure is another area that moved a slight bit forward. There has been those that have uh, done disclosure in their own countries in their own way. Now, it is not front headline news that in uh, the Congo, uh, one of the politicians may have said something that would be considered a portion of disclosure. There are many around the world that have inadvertently or on purpose said something that has uh, led you closer to disclosure and people are starting to listen a little bit more carefully. Now, the things that are happening in the United States are there to blind people because uh, there's so much going on there that is so unbelievable that a lot of people around the world are, are just a little confused by it and are looking away from disclosure because it would appear that in that area there would be no disclosure coming anytime soon. But in England, in France, in Germany, there has been some disclosure points at some time in um, South America and Africa, there has been some disclosure points, but uh, they don't come right out and say they are for disclosure at this time, but there are those that are actually doing it and not telling anyone a little at a time. Does that make sense to you? They feel yeah. that Yes. Yeah. Is Israel is a, a positive part of it? I do see a lot of a lot of more uh, stories in Israel actually. Actually, Different Israel areas. is the only Middle Eastern country that even mentions it. Hmm. When you when it comes to disclosure, your Iraq, Iran, Turkey, uh, all those in there, Jordan, Syria, no one speaks up about any kind of positive alien actions. That area, it seems completely closed except for Israel. What about um, Spain and Portugal? Spain and Portugal, Spain and Portugal are on the fence, but they're much mm. closer to uh, wanting contact than they were before. Um, Tikar, I have a question. I actually thought about it uh, yesterday very strongly that maybe uh, we can meet actually with governments that said yes or governments that, that are strategic, uh, how strategically. Strategically. Yeah, it's how to pronounce it in my tongue. So it's right. if it's possible for us to basically meet with them actually and maybe convince them, maybe we can uh, offer help or opinion or something of that sort. Some of us has well, galactic most, connections and ties, maybe we can offer them stuff. The, the thing is, is right now, let me make this clear to you. A lot of, the, a lot of them are going, uh-huh, uh-huh, but, but what it is is they are too worried about their own countries they're too worried about their own situations to want to introduce aliens. They, they just think that that would complicate the problem. 
I see. But I think that if we meet with them one on one, we can actually, they could actually be able to uh, ask things that they would not normally ask in a public matter. Yes. Um, so maybe it would I, have more sway. I will ask them if they would like to have that. If they would like to meet in astral is fine. That is fine. I do not see that it will accomplish much quite yet, but I see that it, meeting in astral, they may be a little more honest and forthcoming about how they really feel. Yes, that's what I'm saying. If you meet with them personally, you basically do a divide and conquer between the other countries because each country but will want to know what it's been said and maybe we can use that into our own advantage. Yes. So, well, you know what I'm speaking about. Make, make no uh, mistake about it. There are some countries that are just dead set against alien contact of any kind and i don't know if they will change anytime soon but of course the regimes and countries presidents and governments change so hopefully their thought processes will also change there are those that are very the very religious are the ones that think that aliens are, are all evil and negative and that is a, a stigma that is very hard to fight because they just will not listen. They have, they, those that are, believe that we are negative and uh, have an evil agenda, just will, as soon as we start speaking, they, they cringe and leave. Many, and as soon as we start speaking to some countries, there is a lot that leave immediately and are replaced by someone else in the country a, and a different associate or a different government official. But there are those that will not even listen to us, look at us. They were, some of us, them just look at us and leave. They don't even want to hear what we say, but you, we are, we are getting closer to a time when less and less are doing that, but they still do that. I see, but I don't think you can ever please everyone. The question is, what kind of critical mess do we need to get to in order to have first contact and just tell them if you it's don't want to... All that you really you need... Let me tell you this. What we have discovered is all that we really need is one major country, such as the United States, uh, China, Russia or one of those kinds of countries that have huge populations and much uh, control. What about India? India has a lot of people, but not a lot of control. But yes, even India would be a huge. One of these countries to flip over to our side, it would cause a lot of great thought and pondering on the other side other uh, countries' behalf. Was Trump there? Quickly interject here. There was a question in the chat um, whether um, President Trump was in attendance. So several people were wondering about that. He was in attendance for about eight hours. No, eight, yes, eight, eight and a half hours. And, and he said absolutely nothing. Wow. He actually oh didn't say anything. Wow. Which is it's a surprise, a isn't it? <laughs> wow. I actually <laughs> choked on my water on that Crazy. one. <laughs> no, he usually is very verbal. But I, I really believe that he uh, has a great fear of us. And he, has, he did really did not want to say anything against us because he is a person that respects power and he believes that we are very powerful and he is one that wants that power he wants what we have in and that's really obvious by his body language and how he acted 
I see. So that brings me to another question. Let's say if some of us here on the earth actually has a certain connections and can offer to shower gifts on America if they will do something like that. Of course, not technology or something like that, but somehow uh, reward them for helping humanity or rewarding Russia or China or maybe one of them that will uh, want to have that before the other one. Is it possible to maybe do something like that? We will look into all angles, but um, I, I do not... If we can look in those angles, there are many yes. people, many different ties, come from different well, the thing uh, is, sources. It's, it's more than one person that makes up a government, and it's more than two or four, but a whole group of people. And if one is caught... Uh, doing something against the others, you know what happens then. Yeah, no, I'm saying reward the entire uh, American government with something that is legal and according to rules and regulation. Or if Russia is, the one, yeah. is going to be the major one, then rewarding yeah. uh, that Russia. Has been tried. But remember this, they believe we have hidden agendas, and so they don't mm -hmm. trust that we are just being friendly. They don't trust that. So how um, about so, the sure, Wait a second now. Um, I want to just recognize here that other people may have a question um, and that we're also needing to wrap up here in on the short, in before too long. So does anybody else have a question that they would like to uh, ask at this time? I wanted to know Can you hear me? Who is yes, that? Go April. ahead. Yes. Yes, I was wondering if I was there and if I spoke. You were there and you did speak. Okay. What did I speak about? Actually, you spoke about two things. You spoke about hybridization in the children, and you talked about how that could bring um, peace to the earth in some ways if we were to accept that uh, prejudice was not part of society in any way, that love and equality would be the greatest portion of the world. And that when you, when you look at these children that have been hybrid children, and you showed pictures and examples, um, that they are the, the visions of joy and love on these other planets and that you would like to bring that kind of atmosphere to the earth. Thank you. And um, what do you believe that Trump needs to have done for him to change the way he thinks? Because being quiet is a great change. <laughs> It is. What the thing is, let me tell you something that I didn't mention before. He is aware of great technology as well. He is involved with it. He's involved with technology that is far beyond what you can imagine. And he knows about what he can do and it has saved him and has continued to save him. And he wants the reason why he did not speak is because we knew everything that he would have to say, and he knew that already, because he had already looked at some of the past documents with all of our um, comments. He's looked at who is all, everybody who has ever been at any of these meetings from the United States, and what they have said, and he is very smart when it comes to manipulation, and that is his manipulative move on this behalf, on his behalf, is that he is not noted to be a quiet man. He is not, he is, has very strong opinions and lets them out very unlegislated. But he's also in this situation dealing with something he doesn't completely understand. And if he were to not speak properly in this proper, 
in this place, he would be a laughing stock, and he did want, not want that. Thank you. I have a question. It makes me feel much better. Yes. Hello, Tagar. Hello. Um, so Alex. Yes. Uh, so Trump is uh, is neutral for the moment. No, he is not. Matter. Actually, he is not neutral. He's against aliens coming, but he wants their technology. Uh huh. He would be so, willing to trade for it, but he doesn't want the aliens to be here. Uh, yes, the quest for power. That's it. I didn't hear that. The quest for power. That's it. Nothing yeah. else. He, yeah. You must understand. Look at his his career. Who has it been for? Who can he name as a good friend? There is very, very few that will support him as a friend. They will support him as a candidate, but there he has very few friends. Why is that? Because he is about himself and the power. I see. So... But that does not make him a terrible person. There I know, been... I know. It will be a long run anyway. Yes. With all that kind of people that are in quest of power and uh, they are thinking just for uh, themselves. I, I did not hear the last part. I say that will be a long run. Yes. With this kind of people Yes. Are thinking just for themselves. Yes. Much more outrage, great, and have power, but they go about it in a much different way than he does. No, I see. Um, I know it's uh, not on the topic, but I have a request. If it's possible for yes. uh, implant, for channeling, for me. An implant? Yes. Yes. <laughs> One moment, please. Sengi, Korea Ravashundo Onde, Ivera Alexis, Korjava Azin. It will be done. Thank you very much. Okay, I would also like to ask for an implant, if possible. We knew which kind he needed. Which kind would you like? Something to help me know more. Did, ah, what do you think should be? Do you have a underwa at April? Yeah, what's not a Rwandi? They will look in to see what you need and will comply. Thank you. Blessing. All right, everybody, we are a little bit past the appointed time here. So, Takar, I would invite any closing comments that you have uh, from your side. All right. Um, I did not want to spend so much time on President Trump, but um, it, he is just a man like any, every other man. But let me say this. The, the people that are in government in, on your planet at this time are an interesting group of people. They have a lot of similar interests about the world. They want to have as much power and control as possible. And that is why we are not in really invited. But I tell you this, there will be a time when we will be there. There will be a time when it will be all good as far as aliens are concerned. We are not the enemy, but we are actually your friends. And eventually they will come to know this and see where we can fit in in a way that is acceptable. Uh, can I just ask a quick question? Yes. 
I know that um, no one is going to give any predictions until basically the beginning of 2019 because of the energies of 2016 and uh, other possible things. Is it become more and more clear about first contact? Do you have uh, a picture that starts to, uh, to be made? about what is yeah. going to become? Well, I can tell you this. The picture that is clear to us is that a, a major domino has to fall before the rest will follow. And when that happens, we will take full advantage of that and, and uh, we will give you a good show. Hmm. Uh, you also said in one of the challenge uh, classes that if this timeline will to continue, this is, will be a great timeline. So yeah. we are on the right uh, track. For the most part. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's hope that uh, next week we are going to be here. And the I timeline believe is going we will. To you have a lot of support from outside your world, like I said. A lot of prayers and healing coming from many areas of the universe. And that is a powerful thing. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You are welcome. And, and perhaps we'll, we can use the time to once again remind everybody to send their healing energies and their prayers uh, yes. to Mother Earth the atmosphere and the timeline, and perhaps also those scientists um, who are working on a solution. Yes, and they are working very, diff uh, very uh, hard under difficult situations. One more question, please. Go yes. ahead, Alexis. So, Tucker, um, plasma have uh, different layers or uh, type of information, right? That is true. Energy thought is plasma, in a way, right? Energy is what? Energy, thought energy. Praying energy is plasma, right? So, on the human level, for everybody here to understand, what particularly uh, type of information needed in plasma Besides praying, it's a, it's a information. Yes. Like you have uh, for body minerals, yes? You need yes. some particularity. So... I think, yes. I, I think I understood what you said, and that is, yes. There are, there are thought energies, and there are all, all kinds of other positive energies as well. Use as many of them as you can. Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't get the answer, but uh, I, it's okay. I'm sorry if I misunderstood. So uh, we have a periodic table for m minerals and uh, all that stuff. Yes. And yes. In the plasma, it's also a table for properties, right? Yes. In this situation, in particularity with Antarctica, we need something on that table, plasma table, as yes. information. Okay, so. Yeah. That is correct. Yes, okay. Well. Thank you very much for listening and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming to Kerr. Thank you very much. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. There is more information, but some other time. Thank oh. you, teacher. Thanks, teacher.
Thank you for hosting. Oh, thank you, Astrid. Welcome thank back, Jim. Welcome to stop the thank recording you. now.